Once again, a special good afternoon to our viewers on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Let me apologize for our technical difficulties that we experienced with the audio a bit earlier. I hope everybody's hearing me loud and clear now. And just give us a signal, a thumbs up, so that we know that you are hearing what we're saying. Welcome to Agchem's Farm. And today we'll be focusing on our virus control strategy. I am your presenter, Dennis Lecky, Product Development Agronomist for the Northeast region. Diving right in, let us look what, at what is a virus. Now a virus is a sub-microscopic, which means that it is too small to even be seen with a microscope. It's an infectious agent that replicates only inside the cell of a living organism. Now, what this simply means is that if that organism that is infected with the virus dies, then the virus will also die along with it. So the virus needs a healthy living host to then infect and then replicate and spread to the virus. Viruses are a very major concern for farmers. And this is especially important for farmers who do tomato production, sweet pepper production, hot pepper production, and even other crops of importance. Some viruses though, and this is important, are seed borne in nature. So for farmers out there, it's very important that you always purchase seeds from reputable suppliers, just so you can ensure that these seeds are quite healthy with no previous infections being carried through those seeds. Some important facts on viruses. The viruses are mainly transmitted though, through insect vectors. And these can be prevent, however, it can be prevented, or the virus spread can be prevented by controlling the vectors that transmit the virus. It's also important to note that the viruses, they cannot be expelled by the plants. The plants cannot overwhelm the virus and get rid of it, like how we could get rid of the common cold. The viruses will actually remain in the plants for the rest of its life. However, most importantly, the symptoms shown by the virus, um, the plants, because of the viral infection, those can be treated. And for you farmers, help to produce, help you to be able to produce and recover some of the inputs that you put in, in purchasing seedlings or seeds, in preparing of lands, in your chemical fertilizer, labor, and other costs that might be associated with production. Let's jump into some of the main types of viruses. You have the tomato Gemini virus, which its main insect vector, white flies and aphids, 
they affect crops such as tomato and pepper. The tomato yellow leaf curl virus is one that is a major, it's probably the most significant virus that affects tomato farmers, especially here in Jamaica. Or we call it the jerry curl virus. It's mainly spread by white flies. And the main crop that it affects is our tomatoes. So I know a lot of farmers like to say, my sweet pepper or my hot pepper is jerry curling. No, that doesn't happen to, to, me, to, to your peppers. It's mainly to this to, it is mainly due to tomatoes. The tomato spotted wilt virus. Now the tomato spotted wilt virus, many farmers in greenhouse environments, those farmers tend to have major issues right there. And this is spread mainly by thrips. Yes, it is. The major crops affected include tomato and sweet peppers. The tobacco mosaic virus. This is spread mainly through white flies, thrips, aphids. And the main crops affected include tomato, peppers, and cucumber. Which one, the, the virus that we'll be focusing on mainly today is the tomato yellow leaf curl virus or the jerry curl virus. Important symptoms that you'll note with the jerry curl virus. Stunted growth of your plant. And this will, and typically the jerry curl virus will come in and um, you'll see the effects of the jerry curl virus on your plant within the first three to four weeks after becoming infected with the virus. So for many farmers out there, you might have plant, transplanted your seedlings, and then by the time your seedlings are about four weeks old, you start to see the symptoms of the jerry curl virus. What you will also see is upward curling of leaves. And this now will be evident where you see your leaves are curling upward and in on itself. And hence the, the, the jerry curl name that is given to the virus. You'll also see chlorosis, and chlorosis is pretty much just a fancy way of saying your leaves start to turn yellow in color. You also see a reduction in your leaf size. So instead of having those big, beautiful, healthy leaves, what you start to get are smaller, shorter leaves. You also see a flower or fruit drop as a result of the viral infection. Now, what will happen right there is that due to the effects of the virus and the plant trying to fight off the viral infection, the plant will, in some cases, abort fruit and flowers. And even eventually, once it progresses worse, even leaves. Our Agchem virus treatment program, which is what we use to help build the plant's immunity, because pretty much as we mentioned, you cannot cure the viral infection, but in building the plant's immunity and its resilience and assist the plant into, in being able to produce flowers and fruit so as to help the farmer, you yourself, to recover some of your losses. So, major components of our virus treatment program. Our Miller Microplex. Now, the microplex itself contains multiple micronutrients, which at the time of the viral infection, you'll start to see the deficiencies in, for example, boron, calcium, iron, zinc, magnesium, and so on. What we also do at that time in the program, and this program is, has been developed through work with other agronomists or other an agronomist team throughout the island and through some amount of trial and error and experimentation to see what set of products combine best together to treat the viral infection. So we also use our plant hormones, which is a Miller cytokine. And the Miller cytokine is used at 10 mils per gallon 
or what would be two teaspoons per gallon. Miller Green Stim, which is essentially our anti-stress treatment because due to the viral infection, the plant will be under stress, both from the virus, from environmental conditions, from pest problems, from other diseases such as fungus, um, fungal diseases um, that might come in and try to affect the plant at that time with its weakened immune system. Our Miller Nutrient Express is also used. And the Nutrient Express is 44127. And with that blend, 44127 is high in uh, phosphorus and potassium. This is really a blossom booster. So we're trying to push the plant into producing more flowers and fruit and get those flowers and fruit bigger and healthier to help increase your production. We also use our Omex Bio 20, which apart from being a, 20, a highly concentrated 2020-20 mix, it also has seaweed extract, which assists in pushing the plant to grow and produce more roots and thus be able to better uptake nutrients and moisture so it has a better chance at survival. We also included caprid. Now caprid is in, in, in the control of thrips, white flies, aphids. Um, what we try to do there is control the level of the vectors within the environment. Because once again, if one plant is infected and your field is highly infested with, for example, white flies, you run the risk of having a greater level of spread of the viral load throughout the entire field. And piece of advice right here is that if it is that you suspect and find a plant that is infested or infected with a virus, such as a tomato, yellow leaf curl virus, jerry curl virus, um, at that point in time, uproot that plant and dispose of it outside of your field. The last product that we used in our week one treatment was our Bellis. And Bellis is our premier fungicide uh, with paraclostrobin and boscolid. Uh, we use it at what we call the excellence rate, which is at 16 grams per gallon of water. And what we have found is that this rate, what it does is that it triggers the plant's natural immune response and plant production response to help the plant to produce even more because what we want to do is that even though the virus might be replicating and getting worse within the body of the plant we want to hurry up and try to get as much production out of the plant as possible and one other major thing that i recommend to all farmers at this point is to ensure that you use your adjuvants or your stickers now for many farmers a sticker is liquid soap or soap powder but no, for us, that is not it. For us, our sticker is exit. And what exit pretty much does is that it assists the plant, the, the, the chemicals that we are applying to the plant to be better able to be absorbed into the plant where it is needed. Let's move on to week two. Now, in week two, we continued once again with our Miller Cytokine application at 10 mils per gallon our Miller ZMC Express. And ZMC Express is pretty much a shot of zinc, magnesium, and calcium that will help build the plant's immune system and help it also to fight off the viral infection. Once again, Miller Nutrient Express 44127, Omex Bio20, Cure, and also bellies. Now, cure in this case as well also helps to treat and fight off the white fly infestation within the field. So pretty much in each week, what you need to do is to ensure that the vector pest of importance that will be spreading the viral load, that you need to keep under control. And I recommend a rotation of insecticides. Don't use the same insecticide week on top of week. After a while, what you run the risk of building up is pest, pesticide resistance within that insect pest. So please rotate your, 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 your insecticides. Once again, Bellis is also used at the excellence rate. Now, in the case with the farmer that we did this virus treatment with, who you will see later, um, a video clip um, with Mr. Johnson, what we did is that we used the Bellis at the excellence rate throughout 
the treatment of the virus program, pro, um, virus control program. And this was because at the time that we encountered his crop, it was about three to four weeks since transplant. And that would have been the perfect time period for when you could get the maximum production using the Bellis Axelens effect. And we ran with it right there as well as treating the virus issues. Our week three, once again, rotating our insecticides, rotate through into now Indicar. Once again, Bellis for the third treatment, Omex Fortify. And an important thing about Omex Fortify is that it contains a high level of phosphorus as well as potassium. But one of the nice things about the phosphorus that is in Omex Fortify is that it has both phosphates and phosphites. So the phosphates would be the nutrients that the plant would use, and then the phosphites would actually be other nutrients, but also it, they, it acts as a fungicide as well. You know, and you know, it's important to note that at this point that the plant is already infected with a viral load, and as such, it's using a lot of energy to fight back the virus. And it's due to that now, what might come in and actually kill it is other fungal diseases such as your late blight or your downy mildew that might come in and destroy your tomato or your pepper crop. So we try to ensure that we balance our fungicide use as well. We come in at that time also, one more shot with our hormone, the cytokine, pushing once again early production from the plant. And it's at this point that we actually saw fruiting taking place to the point where the farmer would have been just about a week away from being able to actually reap fruits. Once again, we also came in with our, our, our Miller Microplex. In the last week of treatment, we switched our fungicide now because our Bellis Axelens treatment usually lasts for three weeks in tomatoes. So we switched over now and used our BASF product, Zampro, which provides great all around treatment for fungal infections. And it was at this time that at, visit, at the visit with the farmer, we started to notice that you know, you start, you, you'd see one and two leaves burning, as farmers would say. You know, leaves start burn, and you know that is early signs that, hey, late blight might be coming in right there. So we ran with our Zampro right away. We also rotated back through to Caprid, used our Omex Fortify, and note importantly now, our Omex Calmax B. And the Omex Calmax B is important here because high in calcium as well as boron, which is excellent for your flower development and retention, your fruit development and retention, as well as your boron for your floral morphology and fruit development. We also continued with our final treatment of our Miller cytokine, as well as our Miller microplex. Now, what is one of our major products that we, 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 we focused on was actually to build up the micronutrient health of the plant because ma many times fighting all these, uh, these viral diseases, the micronutrient deficiency shows up most immediately on the plant. So things like the browning of the older leaves, which will be due to deficiencies in say magnesium. Um, you know, you have your chlorosis which is indicative of other deficiencies. Your tip burns where the leaves, the outer edges of your leaves or the tips of your leaves start to burn and curl in showing that you might have calcium deficiencies or the iron deficiency in the chlorosis. So we tried to ensure that we corrected those micronutrient deficiencies as well as provide the plants with the main NPK nutrition that the plant might need while it is going through the battle to fight its life. And now we'll switch over to our work that we did with Mr. Rudolph Johnson from Decoy St. Mary, where we visited him, ran the AgChem treatment, and sit back and enjoy his, his, his interview.
I come back here. If I come back here, apologize for the technical difficulties. We will edit and re upload this video later so you can watch and recap. Okay, well, let me apologize. Trying to get very few thoughts in here. But um, let me apologize once again with some more technical issues. But I'll try to quickly um, run through what we did with Mr. Johnson and then we'll also edit this video and re upload it um, with the interview with Mr. Johnson. So basically, at the time that we met Mr. Johnson, his plants were about three to four weeks since transplant. And he was pretty much ripping out his hair, ready to uproot all his plants. Um, the discussion that we had with him was that, you know, let us try this program. It can't harm him because all he'll be investing in is, is, is uh, labor and time, and we will do the treatment for him. Now, after two weeks of treatment, it became very obvious that the plan was working and that he would actually be able to get some production from his plants. And at that time, what you would have seen on our initial visit were about four weeks old plants showing the, sim the typical symptoms of Jerry curl virus. So leaves curling, stunted growth, chlorosis, you name it. As you see, that was definitely Jerry curl virus right there. Um, Following treatments, though, and, you know, what, what, what we did, building the nutrition, building the resilience of the plants, what you started to see was an immediate jump in the production of flowers and fruits. So though you might have still seen some amount of curling with the leaves and chlorosis, we still got the production of fruits and flowers. And here, what you can see is actually the fruit cluster set, which is very important for the farmers because you want in your plummy type tomatoes at least clusters that have a minimum of even five fruits per cluster going up the length of the plant and for mr johnson in some cases we got seven and eight fruits per cluster following the treatment of the the the, the, the completion of the treatment of the program the 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 the, the, the yields were self-evident where the farmer had started to reap and, re and has completed at least six weeks of reaping with about two more weeks of reaping to go. So that is pretty much excellent production for him based on the fact that he came down with such a severe outbreak where more than 90% of the plants in his field showed symptoms of Jerry curl virus at two weeks, between two and four weeks after transplanting. But it's important to note some precautions to farmers and you have to protect yourself and we will help to protect you. When purchasing plants, ensure that they are clean and free of virus and disease pathogens. So our nursery operator friends out there, we work closely with you and likewise the farmers. What we want is that each plant that is coming from the nursery or from your seed beds ensure to check them if the plant does not look healthy do not plant it it will only cost you more in the long run and and this will cost you both in the chemical the labor the work that has to go into it and then it costs you also in the reduced yields that you'll get from planting a seedling that is not healthy ensure that you remove all weeds and this is important because there are some weeds present that might be a natural host for the virus, but it does not show symptoms of the virus. So you might be there and you're saying, but nobody else in my area, I have, I have left, I'm deep in the woods of Sherwood Forest in Portland. Nobody else is anywhere near me. And I'm coming down with tomato yellow leaf curl virus, not knowing that probably a neighbor some, somewhere down the road had tomato in that area the natural uh, uh, um the other other naturally growing or occurring plants within the area got infected 
and they have the disease right there incubating until you go and plant your tomato there and your tomato comes down with the virus. So it is very important that you take the precautions. Wash your hands frequently. And this is also important because things like the tobacco mosaic virus and others, you're smoking. And um, at this point, I, I, I always tell my farmers, the worst thing that you can do when producing peppers and tomatoes is to smoke in your field. Smoking is a big no-no. And this is because whether it be marijuana or tobacco itself, they might have the residue of the virus. And when you go and handle plants that are not infected, you actually may be able to infect them at that time and spread disease into your field. So smoking, big no-no, ensure that you wash your hands when handling and moving throughout your field. And if you see an infected plant, uproot, dispose of, and then wash your hands after. Because some residue might be on your hands that can be spread back into the field. Disinfect all your tools. Disinfect your entire body, as a matter of fact. One of the things I tell farmers is that your biosecurity, your farm, you know, make, make a neighbor vex with you pretty much in telling him, don't walk through my field. It's one of the most dangerous things you can do to have somebody leaving from, for example, a tomato field that is completely infested or infected with the, for example, the jerry curl virus or others, and then walk through your perfectly healthy field and then potentially infect it. So make your bridge in vex, but let them understand, don't come through my field. I don't want it to potentially infect my field with anything. And the boring of tools, you know, yeah, you want to help your bridging, you want to lend in your fork or, or your hoe, but before it pass through, ensure that you wash it and disinfect it after each use. And even if you're up moving in your own farm from an older field to a younger field and using the same tools, ensure that you disinfect it even then and there as well. All right, so let's recap. Important notes that I would like for you to retain and remember. Viruses, they will occur naturally and pretty much all farmers who produce um, any kind of crop uh, can come down with a viral infection. However, it's important to know that the virus is not a death nail in the, in, in the coffin of the plant. It can be treated and managed so that you, the farmer, can earn something from the crop. Treatment is not only in the use of chemicals, but in your management of the crop, keeping the area clean, free of weeds, limiting movement through your field, eliminating the infected plants the minute that you see them, and then now come in with Agchem's full suite of treatment for viral control in your crops. At this point in time, we'll run into our question and answer segment because I know our viewers on Facebook and YouTube had some questions for us. So we'll head over there now. And Georgia will take your questions. Question from Instagram. What do you use to disinfect tools? Okay. So pretty much any strong disinfectant, even like bleach, can be used. Um, you know, wash off, remove the excess dirt, and then you can actually dip the tools in a bleach water solution. And that will be pretty much your standard, straightforward um, disinfectant. Not a question for you, Mr. Lecky. How do I know if my plants has virus? Okay, so we'll run back into the presentation a little. Remember important things to note. Typically, it will sh the virus symptoms will show up in about three to four weeks after the initial infection took place. What you'll see, curling of the leaves, possible discoloration or chlorosis, so the leaves will start to turn yellow, stunting of the plant growth, so your plant is stuff getting tall and looking robust and strong. It stays short and 
hardly grows. No matter how much water, no matter how much fertilizer you're giving it, it's not growing, it's not getting tall, it's not branching properly. Smaller leaves. So you know your scotch bonnet pepper is supposed to have big, broad leaves. But all you're seeing is some little fine, deformed leaves coming out. Chances are you might have an infection with a virus. You might see in your producing plant, and a lot of time these viruses can show up at the time that you're actually in production. What you'll see, deformities in your fruit, discoloration in your fruit, or even premature flower and fruit drop. But it is essential though, we have multiple agronomists throughout the island. And if you suspect that you have a viral infection, call one of the team members and we'll be happy to come out, visit your farm and do an assessment and then give you some advice on how you can treat the infection. Okay, I follow up with the same person. I need an officer to work with in Onslow and post them St. Elizabeth. So that officer is Sion Spence and his contact information is 5520885. That's 876-5520885. Another question from Instagram, Mark Agritech. Will the tomato fruits have the virus after it has been picked or harvested? All right, that's a very, very good question. And remember, I mentioned a bit earlier about that some viruses can be transmitted through seeds. So this is where it is important that if it is that your field has been invested with a viral um, pathogen, at this point in time, those seeds would not be good for use in um, trying to replant. So I know some of us like to wash seeds. Well, definitely no, that's a no-no for any plants that have come down with a viral infection. Okay, and Diduce, it's, I'm happy to know that 90% of the products you use are from the AdChem brand. Um, another question. What is the main AdChem product used to control the virus? All right, so based on many of the symptoms that the plant will show due to the viral infection, we stick to the use of Microplex and ZMC Express. But we also incorporate other products controlling the vectors, controlling other fungal diseases that might affect the plant, and then use products now that will help to boost the production of the plant so that the plant can hurry up and give you the production before the virus get too bad and start to knock it down. Um, another question. How compatible are the products you outlined with other products on the market? Okay, with that question, it's very important that with each, with each product, you do a compatibility test. Now, from all products sold by AgChem, we have done the compatibility test and found no phytotoxic effects by mixing and matching any of them together. But it's important, copper-based fungicides, such as our sulcox, you should be very careful in when and how you use those crop, that product because it can or may cause premature flow and fruit drop due to the copper content in the product. Um, also, there's, there are aluminum-based products. Those, you also have to be very, very careful in what, pro what other products you mix those with because those can have phytotoxic effects as well. Okay. How soon after I apply the virus program, I will start seeing a difference in my crops? Okay. Well, one of the amazing thing, things about the Miller and Omex products is that within days after applying, um, you know, within um, seven days after application, you start to see the results. So, for example, our Nutrient Express and ZMC Express, notice that express name. It means that it moves like an express freight train into the plant and start to work. So, pretty much by the seven days after your initial treatment, the new growth of leaves that you see, you know, those leaves, you're going to start to see a difference in them. Those will start to look much more healthy, showing much more normal development going along. And, you know, by the second week of treatment, 14 days after, it will be almost as if the plant wasn't really infected with the viral problem in the first place. Uh, question for you, Mr. Lecky. Does Akin plant sell virus-tolerant tomato seeds? 
Okay, well, that's good. There, there, and let me dis, do a distinction for farmers. There is virus resistant and virus tolerant. So the resistant types, those are the ones that, that it might be resistant to a particular virus. And the tolerant type mean that if it comes down with a virus with proper management and care, the plant will be able to bear and produce as if it didn't really have the virus and still give you a very good return. And for us here at Agchem, our resist our virus tolerant tomato um, cultivar is the world famous Delhi cultivar that multiple farmers throughout the length and breadth of Jamaica ask for on a daily basis. And let me tell you, we have it in stock now. Get it while it's hot because it might not be here for much longer. Question for you, Mr. Lecky. What products can be used to control the vectors that control the virus? Okay, so the vectors that spread the virus, um, we keep a continuous rotation of products that will offer the control. So, for example, uh, the, the, the good old faithful caprid that will control piercing, sucking insects. We also have Definite, which also provides great control. Indicarb, which is our new superstar product that provides great control in thrips, white flies, and aphids. It's pretty much now uh, 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 all around uh, in terms of, of, of combating the pest, as well as other products that we have in our product line that can be mixed and matched with each other in order to give you that kind of control. But once again with that, keep in contact with one of our agronomists. We'll be happy to come and help you. What other crops can the virus control strategy be used on? Okay, very good question. Now, apart from our peppers and tomatoes, pretty much all our solanaceous or nightshade crops might be might come down with one or more of these different viruses. So, for example, your pumpkin, um, potatoes, um, and others. But one of the important things to note is that your management of your field and your selections of seeds is going to play an important part there. So pretty much all solanaceous crops, which is all of the nightshades that are related to say tomatoes and um, tomatoes and peppers may come down with it, as well as some other crops, um, root crops and um, tree crops can come down with viral, viral, different types of viral infections. Question from Instagram, MC Agritech. Are the biosimilant root drench folio or both? Okay. Excellent question once again. Multiple products that we have can be used both foliarly and as a root drench, depending on the specific problem that we're trying to treat. So, for example, our Bio 20 can be used both foliarly and through the drip or as a root drench. Likewise, our green stem can be used both foliarly and as a drench. So it depends specifically on the problem that you might have or what issues we might be trying to treat, then we'll determine whether or not foliar application or drench would be the better treatment. And that's it for the questions. Okay, well, to our viewers, I'd like to thank you for bearing with us even through our technical difficulties and for your questions. Oh, one more question at the bell. At what point does the biostimulants guarantee results and at what point it doesn't make any sense? Okay, so based on, 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 on our work thus far in the field, um, if, if we have spotted the virus infection within the first two weeks of that initial infection, then we'll be able to give you very, very good results from using the biostimulants and the treatment program. Pretty much once it has gotten to about a month where it is widespread throughout the entire field and then the plants start to show um, 
other symptoms of other diseases coming in because in many cases it's not only the virus that kills the plant it's actually the secondary infections that come in as a result of the plant's weakened immune system fighting off the virus that will actually cause the the the, the, the plant to die so you're looking at tomatoes for example the virus comes in we have late blight or downy mildew coming and that gets severe and the treatments that we have, the leaves we can't protect because we need leaves to be, to, to be up and functional in order for the, the products to be absorbed into the plant. And we don't have that, we pretty much won't be able to, to, to save that plant. All right. Okay, so farmers, um, once again, thank you for bearing with us through our technical difficulties. And I encourage you to continue following us like and share our content um, definitely tune in with us once again as we try to bring information to you in the world of covid through our social media channels stick with us thank you good evening <laughs>